any orbital class rocket that is capable of reflight. Now starting at the top of the vehicle is the payload fairing, which is a protective shell that encases the payload or satellite being sent to space. The fairings are made of a carbon composite material and have a 17 foot diameter, which creates the space to accommodate an average sized fire truck. Now the fairing made up of two halves will separate and jettison away from the vehicle, exposing the payload once Falcon 9 reaches space. Now both payload fairing halves supporting tonight's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its 16th time and the other flying for its 9th time. Continuing down the vehicle, we have the second stage. The second stage is powered stage by a... Stage one, RP one load is complete. Good call out there. The second stage is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine, or MVAC engine, which is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. After stage separation, the MVAC engine will ignite and carry the payload to its final orbit. That second stage is connected to the Falcon 9 first stage via the black composite interstage, which houses the MVAC engine and the system that decouples the two stages during stage separation. And below that is the first stage, which is powered by nine Merlin 1D engines. These nine Merlin engines provide the initial thrust to lift Falcon 9 off the ground through the lower, thicker part of the atmosphere. There are eight engines arranged around one center engine and are collectively held in place by a structure called the OctaWeb. Each of these Merlin 1D engines delivers about 190,000 pounds of thrust at sea level, which gives Falcon 9 a combined 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Now after stage separation, stage one, also called the booster, will return to Earth for recovery and reuse on a future mission using a combination of the Merlin sea level engines and the four titanium grid fins located near the top of the booster, which will guide the vehicle during its re-entry and landing. The Falcon 9 first stage is also equipped with four landing legs that'll deploy just before landing and allow for vertical touchdown on a drone ship or a landing pad. Falcon 9 thanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. Good call out there, and for today's mission, we'll be attempting to recover this booster on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, which you just saw on your screen there, which is currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Now both the weather and vehicle continue to look good for today's launch out of Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Coming up shortly, the Transporter Erector, or TE, will retract away from the Falcon rocket. Now that TE is the large truss structure you see there next to the vehicle. First we'll see those clamp- back retract has started. And there's that call out for strong back retract. First, the clamp arms will open around the top of the second stage, following by retraction of the TE. Now, the first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but it's hinged and will retract away from the vehicle in preparation for launch. You may hear the TE referred to as the strong back from the launch team, and it does a lot of heavy lifting in the lead up to launch. It's designed to transport, raise, and support Falcon 9 at the launch pad. It's also equipped with umbilicals or flexible lines that are used to route the vehicle's fluid power and telemetry from the ground systems to the rocket and payload until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the pad. And there you can see the strong back retracting away from the Falcon vehicle on your screen. At this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of rocket-grade kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both the first and second stages should finish propellant loading about a minute apart from each other, with the first stage finishing up at the T minus three minute mark, and the second stage finishing at around the T minus two minute mark. And as you may have noticed, there are white clouds forming around the vehicle. Those clouds are comprised of the chilled gas above the LOX tank that is vented overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when that vented oxygen mixes with the warmer California air, it condenses into clouds. Stage one LOX load is complete. And good call out there. Now at T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will be in startup, and this means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. And just inside of T minus two seconds, we'll light the M1D engines for liftoff. Now the payload continues to be healthy, and the Falcon 9 team is currently tracking no issues on the rocket. Weather is still looking green, and the range is ready to support our T0 of 7.53 p.m. Pacific time. So with that, we're proceeding into the final moments of terminal count. Coming up shortly, we should hear a call out that stage two locks loading will be complete on our vehicle. That should happen in just about 15 seconds from now.
Now, as a reminder, the white clouds around the vehicle are completely normal and are comprised of the chilled gas in the LOX tank that is vented overboard so that we can backfill and maintain pressure in the tanks. Stage we 2 LOX load is complete. And there's that call out for stage 2 LOX loading completion. The Falcon 9 rocket on your screen is now loaded with 1 million pounds of fuel and oxidizer. In just about 30 seconds from now, Ground we gas close out. Good call out there. In about 25 seconds from now, we should hear the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup, which is when the vehicle's autonomous flight computers will have taken over the launch countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. And there's that call out for Falcon 9 startup. Coming up in just a few moments, the launch director, or LD, will give the final go for launch. LD is go for launch. And there's that final go from the launch director. So with that, let's sit back and watch as Falcon takes the NROL-153 mission to space. T minus 30 seconds. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Liftoff of the Falcon 9. Go SpaceX, go NROL 153. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Stage one propulsion is nominal. At T plus 30 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Now coming up shortly, the vehicle will be passing through max Q, which is the point in the mission profile where the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Now it doesn't look like we're going to catch it in the view today, but as many of you know, there are multiple fi wildfires currently burning around the Southern California area. Our thoughts go out to those affected. Good call out there for Max Q. Our thoughts go out to those affected by the fires, and we here at SpaceX want to give a huge thank you to the firefighters working to put them out, as well as the other emergency crews and volunteers. nominal. As well as the emergency crews and volunteers working to keep everyone safe. And we heard that good call out there for Max Q, which again is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of aerodynamic stress. Now coming up next, we'll have three events happening in quick succession, starting and with back chill. Good call out there. We'll have three events happening in quick succession, starting with MECO, followed by Stage Step and SES-1. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, which is where the first stage separates from the second stage. Followed by this, the MVAC engine on the second stage will light, which is called out as second engine start one, or SES-1. Now this engine burn lasting several minutes will propel the second stage and the payload to orbit. And in addition to these three major events, the fairing halves will separate about 30 seconds after SES-1, so keep an eye out for all of these events coming up starting in about 10 seconds from now. And as a reminder, we will not have any views of Falcon 9 second stage or the payload at the request of our customer. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And good series of back-to-back callouts there, which again were Miko, followed by stage separation, and then SES-1. Now coming up shortly, we should hear a callout for fairing separation, but as a reminder, we will not be showing it on screen. Both payload fairing halves supporting tonight's mission are flight proven, with one half flying for its 16th time, and the other half flying for its ninth time.
Fairing separation confirmed. And there was that call out for a successful fairing separation. We'll be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Lauren C. We're currently at the T plus three and a half minutes mark into today's mission. Now the next major milestone coming up in a, just under three minutes from now will be the entry burn of the Falcon 9 booster as it continues on its journey towards our drone ship called Of Course I Still Love You, currently stationed in the Pacific Ocean. Now to start the entry burn, we'll be relighting three of the M1D engines, which is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down the vehicle as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. We need to slow down the vehicle to reduce re-entry forces, which Vehicles then Vehicles are on a nominal trajectory. Good call out there, which then helps us recover and reuse the first stage. Now during the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but it's still moving incredibly fast. And this causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle's surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the vehicle. Now, to give you an idea of how fast the rocket is traveling, keep an eye on the booster's telemetry at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, which displays the current speed and altitude of the rocket. Now, reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical space infrastructure. The Falcon 9 first stage that is supporting today's mission is performing an entry burn for its 22nd time tonight. This booster previously launched several NROL missions, as well as SARA-1, the Surface Water and Ocean Topography, or SWAT satellite, Transporters 8 and 9, Bandwagon 2, and 13 Starlink missions. The payload fairing halves supporting tonight's mission are also flight proven, with one half flying for its 16th time and the other half flying for its 9th time. Now we should be hearing that call out for the entry burn in just under a minute from now. As a reminder, we are only showing views of our Falcon 9 first stage at the request of our customer. We should hear that call out for the Falcon 9 first stage entry burn in just about five seconds from now. Stage 1 entry burn startup. And there's that call out for the Falcon 9 entry burn startup. This burn is set to last about 20 seconds and again is slowing down the vehicle in preparation for its final burn and landing. Entry burn shut down. And there you heard the call out for the completion of the Falcon 9 first stage's entry burn. Now coming up next will be the first stage landing burn, which will start about a minute from now. Now the Merlin engines on the Falcon 9 first stage are optimized for sea level, and these achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At stage liftoff, one FTS is safe. Good call out. At liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage has thrust greater than five 747 airplanes at full power. Now the MVAC engine, which is located on the second stage, which we are not showing views of, possesses a much wider nozzle and is optimized to 220,500 pounds of thrust in vacuum. Coming up next in about 30 seconds, we'll have the landing burn of the Falcon 9 first stage. Now the landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster and it's used to reduce the remaining stage speed. Stage one transonic. Good call out there. Stage two FTS is safe. That landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle in order to allow for a soft touchdown on our drone ship. Stage, Stage 2, one landing thermal burn. guidance. And there was that call out for the start of the Falcon 9 first stage landing burn.
landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there you have it, successful landing of our Falcon 9 booster on our drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, in the Pacific Ocean. As a reminder, this was the 22nd launch and landing for this first stage. Now, as a reminder, we will not be showing any stage two or deployment views at the request of our customer. So with that landing of the Falcon 9 booster, we'll be bringing today's webcast to a close. Good call out there. But before we go, we have some additional updates for those impact for those impacted by the fires in Southern California. For Starlink customers, Starlink is offering free service in the area indicated here on the map until February 10th. The Starlink and T-Mobile teams have also enabled basic te texting through our direct-to-cell satellites. So you can now text loved ones, text 911, and receive emergency alerts to your DTC-enabled cell phone. Make sure to follow at Starlink on X for updates as we work with local response teams on further opportunities to help and check starlink.com slash LA wildfires for more information. Thank you to our customer for entrusting us with today's mission, and we'd also like to thank the Range and FAA for their support. And if you're interested in more launch coverage, be sure to check SpaceX.com slash launches and follow at SpaceX on X for the most up-to-date information. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.